Now in our next question, at what angle should a highway be banked for the cars traveling at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour if the radius of the road is 400 meters and no frictional forces are involved? In this question, first of all, the given parameter is the radius of the road that is 400 meters and so at what angle should a highway be bent for cars traveling at a speed of 100 kilometers an hour? Well, in this question, radius of the road is given 400. The speed is given as 100 kilometers an hour. This 100 kilometer per hour is multiplied by 5 over 18 and this will be converted into meters per second. Frictional forces neglected. We have to estimate the angle at which the banking of highway is done. That is the road is to be slightly raised up from the outer edge. So we use the formula 10 theta is v square over rg. From that we get the value of tangent theta by putting the given values and then 10 theta is calculated to be 0.19 and theta will be tangent inverse 0.19 which is equivalent to 0.19 radian because if 0.19 is multiplied by 57.3 degrees it will become 11 degrees. So this is what the concept is to be used here and uh, now our next question is the radius of curvature of a railway line at a place when the train is moving with speed of 36 kilometers an hour is 1000 meters. The distance between the two rails being 1.5 meters, we have to calculate the elevation of the outer rail, that is the banking of outer rail above the inner rail, so that there may be no side pressure on the rails and the train will be saved from skidding. To solve this question, first of all, 36 kilometers per hour is converted into meters per second by multiplying this number by 5 over 18. So the number will come 10 meters per second. And another thing which is given, 1000 meter, the distance between the two rails being 1.5, that is height, h, that is given. So now radius is 1000 meters, 10 theta will be v square over rg. We compute the values and 10 theta will be 1 over 9.8. Suppose h is the height to which the outer rail is raised and l is the distance between the two rails. Then tangent theta is perpendicular over base that is h over l because theta is very small. So h will be l 10 theta for l we have computed the value. Then we have computed the value for 10 theta, that is 1 over 9.8 as shown upwards and we will calculate the value to be 0 0.0153 meters. L is given to us 1.5 meters. Now our next question is regarding an aircraft executing a horizontal loop at a speed of 720 kilometers per hour. Convert 720 kilometers per hour into meters per second, multiply this fraction by 5 over 18. With its wing banked at 15 degrees and we have to calculate the radius of the loop. So again, we have to consider V that is 720 kilometers an hour, multiply by 5 over 18 to get the value in meters per second. So it will be 200 meters per second and 10 theta will be 10, 15 degrees. That can be seen from the tables of log, which is found to be 0.2679. Now we use the formula for the same velocity, that is tangent theta is v square over rg. From this, we make the subject of equation r because we have to estimate the radius of the loop. So radius is calculated by v square over g tan theta. We will compute the value of v square, that is 200 into 200. G will be taken as 9.8, however it is not given so you can take 10 also 
and for tangent theta we can put 4.2679 as a whole the calculation comes to be 1523.7 meters and this is converted into kilometers now in our next question a train rounds an unbanked circular bend of radius 30 meters at a speed of 54 kilometers an hour the mass of the train is 1 million kilogram 10 to the power 6 kilogram so first of all we will write the data like radius is 30 and the mass is given 10 to the power 6 the speed is 54 it is multiplied by 5 over 18 so when we multiply then the number will be 15 meters per second what provides the centripetal force required for this purpose the engine or the rails the outer of the inner rails which rail will be wear faster wear out faster the outer or inner rail what is the angle of banking required to prevent the wearing out of the rails now in order to have the solution radius is given v is given it is converted into meters per second mass is given theta is to be estimated so centripetal force is provided by lateral thrust by the outer rail or the flanges of the wheel of the train the train causes an equal and opposite thrust on the outer rail that is action and reaction are equal Newton's third of motion therefore the outer rails wears out faster Again, the formula to be applied is the same. 10 theta is V square over RG. Computing the values and we get the value of 10 theta. Then from that we get the value of theta, which is tangent inverse 0.7653. And from the tables, if we see, it will become 37.43 degrees. Now, in our next question, it's a question on bridge, a convex bridge or a concave bridge. We have to prove that motor car moving over a convex bridge is lighter than the same car resting on the same bridge. Moreover, we have to prove that concave bridge is heavier than the same car resting on the same bridge. Now, first of all, the apparent weight of car is to be estimated. The apparent weight of the car will be equal to its normal reaction, that is N or sometimes it can be represented by capital R. The value of N or R will be Mg, where Mg is the weight acting vertically down. Now we are seeing in the figure, on a convex bridge, the car is moving, the normal reaction is upward and weight Mg is downward. And the car is moving with speed V. So this is what indicated in the figure. It's a case of convex bridge. The motion of the motor car over a convex bridge is the motion along the segment of a circle. The centripetal force is provided by the difference of weight mg of the car and the normal reaction n of the bridge. Now here what we will do, first of all mg minus n, our assumption is mg is greater than n, so mg minus n will be mv square by r or n is equal to mg minus mv square by r. Clearly, normal reaction is less than mg. The apparent weight of the moving car is less than the weight of the stationary car. In the second case, the concave bridge n minus mg. Now here, n is greater than mg. So this difference provides the centripetal force to the car. So n minus mg will be equal to mv square by r. And from this, we get the apparent weight, that is n, which is found to be mg plus mv square over r. 